So, good morning, Bishop Gabriel Malze. How are you this morning? Good morning, Lorraine. I'm doing fine. Yeah. I just, I just want to welcome everyone to another episode of Weekly Conversations with the AEC bishops, the bishops of the Antilles Episcopal Conference. And this morning, we are celebrating World Communications Day, which takes place on May the 16th, um, which is this Sunday. And who better do I have to talk about communications other than our very own communications chairperson, Bishop Gabriel Malde? Thank you, Lorraine. Thank you for inviting me to this interview. I will certainly do my best in, in communicating. All right, Bishop. So as we get into today's program, I just want to share with persons that the theme for World Communications Day is come and see, encountering and communicating with people where they are and as they are. So this program is brought on by, of course, the Antilles Episcopal Conference in collaboration with Cygnus Caribbean. And for those who may not know Bishop, what Cygnus Caribbean is, it is a group of Catholic communicators located here in our Caribbean region. Yes? Yes, indeed. indeed. Yes. Of course, and it is connected with, with Cygnus um, Universal. Uh, it is I mean, it's in, we have Cygnus Caribbean, but that is, of course, part of a universal network. And uh, mm. it is primarily concerned about communicating the good news of God's kingdom. Yes, and Bishop could not have said it any better. So we're going to move into um, our program today. And we're hoping, you know, as we welcome people into the program, I hope persons are joining us from far and wide. Bishop Gabriel Malze, I think I forgot to mention, you represent the Diocese of Roseau, Dominica, yes? Yes, I do. I do. Yes, you do. Yes. So great. So as we move into today's program, I did mention, Bishop, that you are the communications chair. And the AEC, the Antilles Episcopal Conference, is made up of commissions. Mm -hmm. Can you share with our viewers what the purpose of these commissions are? Yeah, um, it is uh, well to know that um, the, the, the commissions are, are meant to help us to carry out the work of the, the AEC, the Antilles Episcopal Conference. Um, just recently, we uh, amalgamated uh, the 14 commissions that we had existing in the AEC, and we brought it down to, to nine. So um, and incidentally, I'm the chairperson of, of the Communication Commission. So we have nine of those commissions, and that include, of course, a new evangelization uh, and uh, communication, with that, which are the two key con commissions. Then we have liturgy, doctrine, um, interreligious dialogue, and so forth. Uh, they are meant to help us as bishops to, to uh, carry out the work of the, the AEC along with, with the public. So, um, these are meant to help us in, in, in whatever field that we are, we are or whatever, whatever work we are doing so that um, we can better serve the people of the region. Thank you so much for sharing that, Bishop. It's so nice to see that the Antilles Episcopal Conference has developed these very focused commissions to help deal with the priorities of mm -hmm. our region. Yes, it's very simple. And I believe that simple is always the way forward. Indeed. Yes? yes, indeed. So Bishop, so as we go into looking at the World Communications Day message, you know, I have to ask the question, how has the evolution of, how has the evolution of communications impacted our region over the last year? How has it? There is no doubt that the communication in the, in the region has been impacted by the current situation, especially with, um, uh, in, in, in the advent of the COVID-19 virus. What has it done? People have become more connected. Um, 
the sharing of information is much more facile. Of course, good and bad information it comes much, 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 much faster. Um, there is a heightened expectations of people for instant, instant results, instant information. Um, it has cut the cost of travel. Uh, people are able to, to communicate uh, much better and faster. Even the question of doing research. Um, previously, if you had to do some research, you had to go abroad or to go to a library. Um, there is a library online, which we call uh, Google. And whenever we, we, we want information, people tell you to Google. In, in fact, in the time in which we live, there is really no excuse to say, I don't know. We only have to Google and we will find information. Information is at the fingertips of everyone. There's no one who is more fortunate than another in communicating. Things are at our fingertips. And these are the kinds of advantages um, or the kind of um, impacts that, that communication has had on our region over the years. I have to say, Bishop, that when it is the onset of the pandemic came on, I was very worried because I know certain dioceses had not at had not reached that place of really grasping um, communications. I know we did start them off with our pastoral letter, new ways of being church in a digital milieu, which, uh, which was a great, um, I guess, prediction of what was to come. Mm -hmm. But I was very nervous because I was like, oh no, how are our dioceses going to move towards communications? And it was almost like they always knew it was there, yeah. you know, and people just became very, our diocese started doing masses online. Yes, yes. It's I amazing. was able, go ahead. It's yes. amazing how, how things change so rapidly. And in right? fact, I, I would, I would, I would, um, I would <laughs> say that um, we were in the Caribbean quite timely in terms of um, bringing out the, the, um, the pastoral letter on communication. It was just yeah. right on target. And it certainly yeah. helped us to see the importance of, of the communication within the context of, of a crisis. Yes, I have to say that it was so refreshing to see, you know, our community, our church community being able to connect with them and being able to, you know, journey with them during the pandemic and felt mm -hmm. like we wasn't alone in this, mm -hmm. you know? Um, so I have to say that for me on my side, Bishop, I have to say that our, the region really benefited from communication during the pandemic. I have to say. I would say that as well. I would have to say yes. That as well. So Bishop, as we move into exploring the world communications, the message, you know, Pope Francis wrote, which I can appreciate, a very short, yes, robust message mm -hmm. that really hit home for a lot of persons who read it. Mm -hmm. You know, he spoke about things like journalism. He spoke about things like the gospel, bringing it back. He spoke, to, he spoke about things like the internet and the pros and cons. And then he also spoke about things like, you know, things can happen virtually, but nothing really beats the fact when it happens like when you're able to experience it in your own space and time, mm -hmm. you know? So before, as we get into it, I have a question for you, of course, Bishop. How can we as Catholic communicators, you know, yourself, myself, our prince and everyone involved, help to promote and inspire quality journalism? Yes, I think um, the Holy Father was right on target as regards his stress on the importance of journalism in the sense that information is very a very important commodity for the proper functioning of our world, the world in which we live. However, good journalism is what Pope Francis is encouraging. We are very much aware of the contrary, what bad journalism and communicating, communicating bad information can do to our world. As Christians, ours, I think, is the duty to provide our faithful with information that um, can enhance our well-being, can promote integrity, and make us more wholesome citizens. So I think generally this is what um, our Holy Father speaks of in, in his message uh, on, on World Communication Communications Day. And of course, the, the theme was 
to come and see. Come and see and experience the good news. And the, the operative word here is good news. Not, you know, frivolous stuff, but communicating uh, Jesus, communicating to our people the important elements of, 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 uh, of news. So I think he is right on target in terms of um, uh, speaking in his message as to what we ought to do as, as Christian journalism. Yes, Bishop, I totally understand and completely agree with you and Pope Francis. You know, journalism was something that I was always on the fence with. Right. You know, I, it takes a certain level of expertise and experience with journalism. And it can at times, you know, tempt you to want to, you know, not really care for journalism, you know, and just report what is being seen. And I believe that journalism takes a certain level of discernment, you know, and an experience. Right. Yeah. yeah. And it is so important because people need to be informed. Yes. But, but you see, we, see, we, we are in a, a, a world that is hungry for news. And unfortunately, a, 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 great, a significant section of the world um, are hungry for, for bad news as well. Exactly. Uh, so our role as Christians is to alter that, to mm -hmm. give what is, is enhancing to the human integrity. And that is where um, journalism in the Christian sense would be very beneficial to, to the work of communication for us. Right. So just to stick a pen there, um, throughout the week, Bishop, you would have seen, because we you are also part of social media as well, and other types of communications, we have been promoting World Communications Day right through the week. And we actually had two persons, one person from Grenada, Betty Ann, and mm -hmm. one person, Raymond Sims, who shared on their experience as journalists. Mm -hmm. And it was quite moving to hear that sometimes journalists are threatened okay. in their attempts. Yes, and I mean, I see what happens on CNN when, of course, um, there are very tough situations that they find themselves in. It's quite, quite something. You know. It is. It is. So we just want to take this time to thank our journalists out there for really, you know, taking up the mantle to give us and to share the good news in a way that is full of quality and versatility. Yeah, we yes? need, need to thank God for that. Yes. So Bishop, my next question to you, I hope it's not too many questions. You know, you know, this is not, you know. <laughs> That's what I'm here for. <laughs> Let's go, right. So um, can you, so we have an audience with us right now and we cannot talk about communications without not mentioning the gospel. So can you remind us as how, of how we can use the gospel as a form of communicating and encountering people where and as they are? Well, first of all, I would say that by its very nature, um, the gospel is an object of communication, meaning that it is meant to be communicated. That's why we call it gospel, to bring the good news. It has to be spread. It has, people have to hear it. So the challenge of the church, however, in, and its ministry is to find the right means of doing that. The most effective means of communicating the good news. Historically, the church and the world at large have gone through phases and evolutions in communication, in communicating the gospel. Um, before the age of printing, for example, communication was by word of mouth. In biblical words, we, say, we call it the oral tradition. And then came the printing press, and we have what we call the, the written tradition. And even the written tradition itself had, it, had its own evolution. We had, of course, the first the parchment paper, the, the parchment, and then paper came into being. Now, in the modern age, newspapers and magazines and hard, hard books are going out of the way out of the windows. So a lot of focus on social is on social media right now, that in a cell phone, you have everything at your fingertips. You could read a book on it. You could read, your, you could pray with your, 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 your bravery with it. Absolutely 
everything can be done on this small device. <laughs> so there has been really an evolution in in the in the in the, in the use of of um, certain devices for for communication. So we we are seeing that. Um, it is, it is certainly what I would, I would describe as amazing how quickly life has changed in a very short space of time with the, with the use of social media. Now, the challenge we have is how could we use these means to bring out the gospel? And as I made reference earlier to the question of the, the, the pandemic and mm -hmm. how, um, you know, so much could have been or could could be done through by meeting connecting with people uh in a time of crisis i think that without social media there would be greater frustration in in life i mean people not being able to be reached uh not being able to connect with your your parishioners and so forth would uh, would really have been a problem so we have it at our at our fingertips the, the challenge we have is to find the proper means of using it effectively or using them effectively to bring out the good news to, of, to God's people. Yes, Bishop. Um, I cannot, of course, you know, a lot of these things that you're saying, you know, we are on the same page here because just as you said that every morning I get up, the first thing I do is I open my phone, but not to read my WhatsApp messages, not to, <laughs> not to read, it's to open my, um, my Bible app right, that yeah. helps me to reflect on the gospel as I start the day. Yeah. And um, I mean, there's an altar in my house mm -hmm. with a Bible on it, right, but right. I mean, but we change the pay. My husband and I would change it occasionally, yeah. but we have to say that our phones um with these these apps that we have it's what we use to really encounter the gospel every it single day it bishop it is i mean it's the same with me i mean i um <laughs> when i wake up the first thing i i check is is my my my, uh, my cell phone and do my my i i set my time for for meditation on the phone so that it alarms at the, at, after 20 minutes of, of meditation so everything i do practically um, is on the either the iPad or the iPhone or, or, or my laptop. So really and truly, it is not to be seen as something foreign or something distant. We, it has to become our friend because it is the means by which we communicate. I think my husband would be very happy to know that you also share the same sentiments as us. When we wake up in the morning, we always go to the phone and the gospel. So I will be sure to share that with him so he doesn't have to feel guilty about it. <laughs> no, 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 no. No need to do. No need to do. It just makes so, life easier. It, it, it really, really does. So I just want to thank the viewers who are here with us watching. Thank you for watching. I am Lauren Branca. I am the communications officer of the Antilles Episcopal Conference, and I'm joined here with Bishop Gabriel Malte, who is the communications chair for the Antilles Episcopal Conference, and we're here talking World Communications Day. So Bishop, now we know the internet, social media, we all love it, we all love spending time with it, it makes, time, it makes things so much easier for us. However, there are challenges that we encounter with the use of the internet and social media. Can you give some advice, some practical, some advice on how it is um, persons, people who are watching on our church community, how can they proactively use the social media? How can they proactively do so? Yes. Now, there's no doubt that um, the, the, the pandemic, which I constantly refer to, has been and still is a scourge in, in our world. However, we cannot deny the fact that on the level of communication, it has brought out the best in us. It has certainly brought out the best in us. It has forced us to stay connected with our people and uh, it continues to do so. In uh, convening meetings, seminars and so forth, um, it has caused us, you know, to be more far-reaching. I, I just to, to 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 give you an example, on um, World Marriage Day, which was in February, we had um, 
uh, a Zoom meeting with couples. And of course, uh, we could reach people whose husband was abroad, they could connect, uh, or whose wife was abroad, they could connect. And of course, my, my platform accommodates 100, 100 persons, 100 strikes. We didn't have space for the number of couples who were able to follow, to follow that session, which means that um, there were at least 300 people on, on, on board because we had the, the, the couples and the members of the family uh, in, in, in that. There is no meeting on a given day that could attract that many people at just at one time. And in different parts of the world, absolutely every part of the world, you know, people could follow. So um, these are means, I, I think, that we, we can use the media for the benefit uh, of, 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 the, of, of the message of the gospel. Um, and I think, you know, that it, we have to be proactive in, the, in that manner, that we have to take every opportunity to spread the good news in the ways that we can reach people. As regards the good news as I'm speaking, we must begin to approach the media without fear. Now I'm speaking to myself, you know, because the more um, I get into, into, into the media, I realize <laughs> how it ought to become my friend. Um, I remember the days, and I still there, a semblance of little fear in the Facebook and, and all those Instagram and, and, the, and the these. Um, they have to become our friend. It's just like swimming. You know, if you, when you're learning to swim, you have to trust the water. You have to know how to, how to, to paddle, but you have to trust the water. And I think the social media is, is such. But, so I mean that um, we do not have to treat the, the, the social media as something alien or something sec purely secular or artificial or something that is less spiritual. And that is what you, you could tell your husband too, that it is not <laughs> less spiritual to use the, the, fo the phone uh, for your, 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 your divine office or yes. for reading the Bible. I mean, I don't think there is more value in the paper rather than, than, than the phone. The fact is communication. We are communicating with God. We are communicating with people. We are communicating with ourselves, you know. Yeah. So the, 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 the important thing is the communication. So yeah. the question of trust is, is certainly helpful in, you know, proactively using the, the social media for for the spreading of the good news and for communicating the divine message. You know, Bishop, thank you for sharing that. I'm so glad that you brought in the idea of fear because that was one of the questions that I had for you as well. Mm -hmm. You know, um, I think everyone in, I think everybody, even myself, encounter fear when it comes to communications because, you know, Bishop, so many new social media networks and platforms are coming up every single day. And my passion is communication. Like right, anybody right. could see that, right, but right. I'm so glad you shared on, you know, giving persons advice on how to tackle social right. media and really use it to communicate and not to be afraid of it because it's your friend, mm -hmm. you know, um, it's your friend and, um, it's so refreshing to hear that. And I think it's so refreshing for our audience, people who, who may encounter this message by maybe WhatsApp, a tool that they're comfortable, might even say, well, maybe I'll try the Facebook, or maybe I'll try the Instagram, you know? Um, so thanks so much for tackling that question right. for us. Now, as we wind down mind on you, our- Mind you, ahead. I still have a whole lot to learn on those, on those because there's still little, little fears that I have experienced myself. You know? Yes. Right. Um, so, Bishop, let me ask you something. Now that we have talked about World Communications Day and three key points that um, Pope Francis spoke about, you became communications chair in the right time because you have a message that could guide you for within the coming within the year to come. What would you say are some of your goals and your dreams and aspirations for communications in our region? 
what would you well, see? Well, first of all, I want to say that this is a learning curve. You know, I mean, mm -hmm. being chair of, of the, the commission, I am working with a whole group of people who are better than myself, who are more who are with, with, the, with the new methods than I do. Um, but, but again, I, I think um, it is, it's an opportunity. And uh, we were really in the process of putting our mission statements, our core, core business of the commission, and of course, the key responsibilities for the commission. So we are, we are just in the, in, the, in the process of finalizing that. But I could just read to you what our, our mission statement says, to use all the tools of communication in the service of mission, communion, and authentic dialogue within the AEC and beyond. And then in terms of our core business, what, what, what the, the, our purpose is, is to foster um, communion through communication te technology. So the, the operative word technology is important, the, the means by which we will do. In terms of the, the, the key areas of responsibilities, and I, I will simply read it because I, I think it is very important to capture it. We, we, we function uh, to facilitate formation of bishops, priests and religious and laity in spirituality, theology and skills of, communicating, of communications, enabling them to use the information communication technology, the ICT platforms to collaborate in the ongoing mission of the AEC. So it's a very broad base. Then to develop an integral pastoral communication plan for the AEC and assist dioceses in developing and implementing their integrated pastoral communication plan. So we, we carry out the role of helping others, you know, to come up with the, with the plan for communication. Thirdly, to partner with Cygnus, which is of course a global network and Cygnus Caribbean in the pursuit of the AC Communication Commission's mission and goals, which would include providing updates and direction and collaborating with the secular media and we must not keep out the secular media because we're all part of the same world. So, so, so to collaborate with the secular media for support in its ev evangelization mission. And fourthly, to respond to issues, disseminate and promote trustworthy information about the Roman Catholic Church, both regionally and globally, including the messages of the Holy Father. So really the purpose is to, you know, do all we can to make communication possible in our region. Um, Bishop, thank you so much for sharing that with us. I think that was one of the most popular questions that we've gotten with regard to the, um, our, the new commissions that we had put in place. You know, what is the mission and vision? You know, people wanted something tangible to hold on to, something really to look forward to. You know, and I can I can really appreciate the language that you used in developing these mission and goals because it's something that is simple and it's something that is that I can see definitely happening because it's it's attainable. That's what I want to say. It's attainable. Okay. Our goals are attainable, and it's something that is very simple to practice and to put into um, collaboration. Yes. So, Bishop, I, you know, this conversation can be one that will, you know, could carry us on for more than a half an hour. But of course, we don't want to keep our viewers back. And we know that you yourself have some communicating to do after this meeting. So, viewers, we just want to thank Bishop Gabriel Malze for coming on and sharing and celebrating. Will communication stay with us? You know, um, Bishop, of course, you know, we are very much on social media right now. We are on Facebook and people could find us at AEC Bishops. And we also have a full on website, which is aecbishops.org. And this is a great way our, to our viewers to stay connected, not only to our bishops, but also to what is happening with our clergy, our laity, our church community, and things that are happening secular as well. Yeah. Well, thank you very much, um, Lorraine, for so, your expert um, uh, interview. And you do very well with your interview. Well, thank, thank you. you, Bishop. I had a very good interviewee.
So, you know, somebody who shared the same passion as I do in communications. And I have to say, Bishop, like, honestly, you have to see yourself. There's a certain fire in you when oh. you talk about communication. There's a fire in you. <laughs> well, I, uh, yeah, I, um, I'll have to find that, that fire, you know? <laughs> Don't worry. You have a team of people and a church behind you that will definitely help you to thank spark you. that thank, fire. Thank you very much. Um, yes. Thank you. So just want to thank everybody for viewing today. Um, of course, follow us on our social media handles. And if you want more information on Will Communications Day, visit our website. We do hope you have a safe and please wear your mask. Please stay safe. Please sanitize um audience we are still in a pandemic you know let's be our brothers keeper during this time let's be our sisters keepers during this time let us end the spread of covid19 yes thank you thank, thank you. you all right okay take care and bye-bye bye 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 Lauren. thank you bye everyone <laughs>